Hello, my name is Ray Hughes and I'm an interviewer for the Veterans History Project conducted by the Library of Congress. This interview is taking place at the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library and conducted here locally by Brian Powers who is our cameraman today. Today's date is the 25th of August 2017 and today we have the honor and privilege of interviewing World War II veteran Leonard L. Kurtz, K-U-E-R-T-Z. It is, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Kurtz. Is it, uh, are you called Len or Leonard? Or Len. Yeah. Len? Uh, uh, Len, if you would, um, where were you uh, born in the date of your birth? Uh, December 2nd, 1925, Cincinnati. Uh -huh. uh, and, but, uh, my parents were living in Camp Washington. In Camp Washington. Was that on Middleton Avenue? Well, that or was not? on Colerain Avenue. Colerain Avenue? The highway is down there. That way now. Yeah. It's just below the, the, the uh, parkway, Columbia Parkway. What were your mom and dad's names, uh, Leonard? Uh, my dad was Joseph Paul Kurtz, and my mother's name was Marie Kurtz. And what was her maiden name? Uh, Neiman. She was a Neiman. N-I-E-M-A-N? Yeah. Yes, I see. What did your dad do for a living, Leonard? Well, he started out, he was at a bakery truck, a small bakery, him and another fellow. And my mother started making noodles in the kitchen and he started to carry them on his bakery route and it got so he was selling more noodles so he, 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 he was in partnership with his father with the bakery route so he took over the, the, the route and dad started making a Kurtz's egg noodles. What kind? They call it Kurtz's egg noodles. Kurtz's egg noodles. And I was down Camp Washington, and we, we left upstairs, and he would make noodles downstairs, and then he started, he had a, another product was a moonbeam mayonnaise. Who? Moonbeam. Moonbeam mayonnaise? Mayonnaise, salad dressing. Uh -huh. And he started with KZ corn, as popcorn, and caramel corn. Caramel he had all these different food products. Uh -huh. And then he, he was a uh, had uh, Antonio Palzola with the uh, macaroni and spaghetti, and he would, uh, and I, he would throw it out to the grocery store. What but, was the name of the uh, spaghetti? Uh, Palzola. Palzola? Yeah, and Antonio, that was the, the original owner then, Palzola. Uh -huh. And uh, so he, distributed his product. And then the war broke out. At the, uh, uh, yeah. That was all that, he had to get out of the business. So. Wow. He couldn't get people to write the, they would get it, cheaper stuff, put it on a truck and use his truck to deliver. And the customers were calling, they haven't seen the driver. And so so he, he was only one guy, oh. <laughs> you know. And, he just couldn't make it. So he sold to somebody that, uh, I can't remember who bought the mayonnaise and all that. Anyway, it's, I think it's all dissolved now. I see. But, what schools did you go to, uh, Len? Well, I went to Annunciation uh, in Clifton Evans Grade School. Mm -hmm. And I went to one year of Roger Bacon. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to be able to enlist in the Air Corps to be a cadet, or what do you call it? And they said if you had aviation background, so I went to aviation high school and worked on their engines and learned all the nomenclature. <laughs> and that, where was that located at? Uh, well, it was up on off of McMillan. About a half a year, we didn't go up there very long. Then we moved downtown down by St. Sycamore Street or whatever. Next to St. Xavier. Uh, Arthur Xavier or the street that or kind of ran into it. I see. What'd you learn there? Well, all about aircraft I uh, see. and stuff. So 
anyway, the, the uh, principal, the, he wrote a big letter for me. Uh, so I, I went up to uh, Indianapolis. It was a recruiting station there. And I was 17 then. And I get on a bus and I went over. I wasn't, wasn't, didn't have enough weight. I couldn't pay. I passed the, the mental test and all that, but I couldn't. I couldn't pass because I didn't have the weight. So I tried that twice. The second time I was eating a bunch of bananas and I had all kinds of stuff. Blah blah. <laughs> I still didn't make it. So when I came home, I went to the the post office downtown, the main post office, and I I. Joined the Marines. I was disgusted. <laughs> so anyway, I joined the Marines. And I had to have my mom and dad's approval. So I uh, went home. You know, I told my brother. So anyway, then a friend of mine who was doing the same thing and arrested, he said, "Now you can go to Fort Thomas and pass the test over there. You got the same thing." You know. So I did that. I go across there and I, and I pass. So it's just more or less an examination at all the other. Uh, you know, Except they passed you. Yeah. They, so I, so I, and I, and I ended up. I went down to block when they put, called me in. When I got 18, they called me in. I went down to Bloxy, Mississippi, Keesler Field, and uh, for that was cadet stuff then, and it was. The guy that was in charge was Master Sergeant John Kowalski. John Kowalski? Yeah, he mm. made boys <laughs> to bed, believe me. <laughs> he was a tough guy, you know. But uh, we would pass and review at five o'clock and all that. And he, he, was, he was really a neat guy. And we'd sing Merzitos and Dozitos <laughs> as we march past at mm -hmm. five o'clock, you know. And, uh, all those kind of songs, you know. So we would get the flag then, you know, if you, whoever was doing it, because we had all our spats on our altars, you know, five o'clock. But uh, then we uh, were going to go after I finished there, and I'm on a, I can't think of, it's a southern kind of, we had all the floods and stuff, and I, I, I just can't remember. Gulfport? Well, Gulfport, but the other way, in Alabama. At uh, uh, Mobile uh, or Pensacola? I think that's something I can't think. It's the big where they had all the floods and stuff when they. Biloxi? No, that's where they. Like Keesler, yeah. Uh, it's the big, it's right on the coast. Well, anyway, we're on a troop train and we pass through that. Maybe we go in at Morrison Restaurant to have a, eat and we come back. He said, we're not going there. We're going to go where we were, thought we were going. Indian, Indian, somewhere. Indian Gap? No, Indian, India. no, Indian, E-N-D-E-N. -E uh, so anyway, we're not going there. We're going to uh, Colorado. And for the convenience of the government, we're all washed out. <laughs> Is that right? So that was a disappointment. You so, were you were training to be a pilot there. Yeah, well, I was. I was supposed to go to like a college or something and get pre-flight, you know, small right. airplane, and then uh, they washed us out. And when we get there, there's guys with officers' uniforms on, navigators, bombardiers, whatever, all washed out, and. Uh, for the convenience of the government. For the convenience of the government, because they had over enlistment. I think yeah. I came about it. That's what it was. But the morale was terrible. And uh, anyway, then I went to gunnery school. You, you went Las, to gunnery school? In Las Vegas. In Las Vegas? Yeah, Nevada. And then we, when I went to armory school, it was like a month. So then we assigned a cruise. And we, what, the, what they called overseas training, and then we went up north, uh, Bangor, Maine, and 
Were you uh, were you flying a B-17 then, or well, what? No, no, we went. Uh, we flew. Yeah, we flew over in a B-17. We, uh, we delivered it right. So from Colorado, you went to Bangor, Maine. Yeah, Bangor, Maine, and then to, uh, the capital. Bangor, Maine, and then I in Greenland. And, Did you uh, on your way overseas? You mean? Yeah. And uh, so you went to Bangor, Maine, and then uh, yeah. to Goose Bay, Labrador? Goose Bay, that's where I was at. Goose yeah. Bay, Labrador, and then... Uh, to uh, Greenland? Greenland, Iceland, and uh, uh, Ireland. Then Scotland? Scotland. And then to England? Yeah, yeah, we went on a bus. Down. On a bus? Yeah, to England. Um, you flew a B-17 over there on what was called the Northern Route then, right? Yeah. That's right. Um, tell us about uh, Greenland and Iceland. Do you recall anything there? Well, that uh, you would take the Iceland as uh, I don't know it, it was Greenland where I think it was the snow and all. Uh -huh. There was one they had that the, the pilots had to go to a movie to see how to come in to land and uh, and you had to land in like a fjord or something there uh, yeah well yeah, and then there was also a lock what they called a lock glacier right yeah and that in the air for the barracks and all that it was right below that and then but they had a, the pilots had to go and, to a pre-flight thing or you know movie and to find out how to, <laughs> to land there now you're a gunner, trained as a gunner now, yeah. is that correct, at this time? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was a waste, right waste gunner. How long did you stay in Greenland and Iceland, would you say? Just like overnight, a couple of, you know, maybe a yeah, full day, mm -hmm. we just shipped out there. So, uh, so you landed in Scotland, and from Scotland you say you took a bus? But we got down into England. Down to Lee, England? That's the familiar. Got towards Leeds in England. And we ended up uh, at uh, Paddington? Paddington. Paddington. Yeah, and it was, it was Bedfordshire was the area around. That was, was what up, was that? Paddington was a little town. Mm -hmm. That Bedfordshire was, Bedford the, area, was the area uh, that Paddington uh -huh. was in. And, and you were, were you, is that when you were assigned to the 92nd Bomb Group? Yeah. yeah. And the 327th Bomb, Bomb Squadron. Squadron, yeah. And you're a gunner, correct? Right. Are you assigned to a crew then? Yeah, well, see, we were a crew when we were down in Florida. We, we were in Gulfport. Gulfport. Yeah, and then uh, for some reason we went into, uh, Florida, I can't remember the city now. Uh, but then we went up to the uh, Bangor, Maine. And so when when you left Florida, did you go to Colorado, and then from Colorado to Maine? Uh, no, uh, no. When I when I left Mississippi, Keeslerfield, Biloxi, right. that was basic. Right. And that was for that all for that stuff, you know. I mean, but then we got on a train, a troop train, and that's when we found out we were all washed out for the convenience of the government, and we ended up in Denver, Colorado, not to where we were supposed to go to, you know, as a as cadet train. Right. So. Now, when were you assigned to a crew? Where were you when you were assigned to the crew? Gulfport. Gulfport. Gulfport, Mississippi. Yeah. And so you went to uh, Pottington with your crew. Pottington, that's where that's where the airfield was. That right. I flew from. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually went over there after the war. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, tell us about Pottington and your crew, then, if you will. Well. The Pottington was, wasn't that far away, and 
We all have bicycles. Guys would get overnight passes, not, not overnight passes, but they would get passes, and they would ride their bicycles in the town. You know, and I, I was, I was just 18, and I, I, I they didn't have any uh, pubs. They didn't have cold beer. And I'd been drinking that beer, but anyway, they would set the beer outside. For the rich, for the GIs, because it would be cooler, you know. Mm -hmm. But they would go in and uh, go to the pubs and that. Uh, but I, I, I didn't drink or anything. So. Did you meet any English girls while you were over there? No. There are, oh, there was one night they showed us around. We were in London. We were coming. We got a pass to London. Oh yeah. And then. At a U.S. function or something, U U.S.O. USO. Mm -hmm. There was a, my na my radio operator and I we were kind of hanging out together, and they, these girls introduced themselves. So they showed us around. They took us on the, the, the tours of London, you know. Of the city. Yeah. And oh yeah. Anyway, then we went to bomb shelters and. Uh, we got a good view of London and the town. Mm -hmm. And then we had our barracks like uh, for officers and for enlistment where you could stay at night. We had we did have an overnight pass. And then the next day we went home. How'd you get there? On bus or uh, yeah, a train. train. A tr train? Yeah. Uh -huh. Leeds or uh, you know. Yeah. We we had one pass in Bill London overnight. Mm -hmm. And um, do you recall when your first mission was and where it was too? Yeah, not kind of. I, I just, I, I kind of remember that. I'm just thinking, gee, a lot of <laughs> You know, you get in and you know, everybody, we, we fly to we get into formation. Right. And then we go to the White Coast of Dover. And across the channel was uh, the Zyder Z. I don't know what the, the Zyder Z. Uh, I think that's like Amsterdam over there somewhere. And from there, we went in on that. So we saw action in, in the Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, there was one flight that was I uh, was a voice cutter. The gunners. The, the left gunner is back towards the tail more, and the right gunner is towards the nose because you, you didn't have room back to back. None of, so right behind me, I'm on the right, there's a ammunition box for the gunner on the left feeding his gun. And it's just in a plywood box, and that's right against my back. And this, this was Castle, I remember it was Castle, Germany. And we, we, we got pretty much damaged and all that. And so when we got back and we landed, and I knew something was, was really, I mean, it was all stuff lying around in, in, in the- Flack. Well, and, and the splendor, like a wood box we had goggles on. And uh, anyway, the crowd crew guy comes in and he says, hey, boy, come here. He showed me, I want to show me something. So we walk around the train, go on the left side of the plane, there's a star and a bar, you know how they Right, the Air Force insignia. Well, in the middle of that star, there was a hole that big. It was an 88, I could take my hand. These were all threads, I thought, like a projector, you know? Yeah. Projector. And if the bottom as big as my, yeah, 88, that was in the ammunition box busting out of it, and my, and I'm standing there, so anyway, I, I think that could have got me right square in my back. Wow. Anyway, I couldn't believe it, so I went, went back in, and sure enough, there it was, I just picked it up. 
I mean, it was... It penetrated the plane, was all, yeah, all, the little, the all the little leakage of the shells, you know, the sh mm -hmm. and the, some of the, the projectors the wonder, smashed. There wasn't an explosion in your yeah. plane. But the guy said they were... <laughs> but the ground crew guy was amazed by how, you know, and I'll be right there if you look at, if you know anything about the B-17, we were staggering them. That, that his box for the ammunition. And that was a real close yeah. call. Yeah, I, I, I said I said I cheated. <laughs> yes, that was, and that was on the bomb run to Castle at it, K A S S E L. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah it, was, it was a pretty bad. <laughs> um, but uh, what other missions uh, can you? Well, that uh, the one down in Munich, I remember that. Uh, that's what I was telling you about. That fellow was on war spurs, and, mm -hmm. and he was telling how he was shot down and was became prisoner. Right. And then the Americans freed him, you know. And, and uh, we actually had damage enough that we couldn't get home, and not enough gasoline to get home. That was another thing. We went down in what they call. Charleroi, Belgium. It's right on the border. Yeah, I think that's Charleroi, C H A R O I, I think, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, O I is the tail end of it, Charleroi. Charleroi. Um, and what mission was that on that you were working? Munich. Munich? Munich? Yeah, and this fellow that was on that all over north, he went on that Munich mission. Uh -huh. But he was must have been in a different bomb group. There's several groups that go on a mission. Right. But that was that was a tough one. And what and were you, your plane was hit by a lot of anti-aircraft yeah, fire? Yeah, we had an engine out and stuff. We had gasoline. We didn't have enough fuel, and they didn't want us to land because uh, they think we could come in. And shorty, I was a pilot. Said a few words and said we're coming in. <laughs> so we did. We didn't. At the end of it, we kind of were, were, ended up. There was some barrels or something on the end. Well, you had to land on a metal runway, yeah, huh? Yeah, it was a, like a mesh, a little metal mesh. Mm -hmm. It was a P-38 uh, air reconnaissance. I see. And we were in town for about three days. We slept in a school in the, in the hallway. <laughs> and, uh, was anybody wounded on your plane for, no. from that encounter? Uh, but you could hear the art, uh, the, it was close the to plaque. The, yeah, no, I mean on the ground. Or oh. The, the artillery, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. You, know, you, could, you, could, you knew there was something <laughs> going on nearby. But, uh, so you had one we, engine out and uh, lost your fuel. Well, we didn't have the fuel to. And then we had to crack the bomb bay doors up and everything that because the hydraulics were. The hydraulics were shot out? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hand crank up yeah, the Bombay yeah, doors yourself? Yeah, yeah. yeah you could tell in the, in the front of the front part of the airplane, or front of the whole Bombay. Kind of dangerous uh, doing that, wasn't uh, yeah. it? I, I can't swim, but I, I, height doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> well, swimming is what I worry about. Oh, I see. We, we had that in training where we had to get to the, uh, in the pond. They had a, a pond with a train sitting, and then we got to get out. And get so, how did how did you get back to England from Charleroi? Uh, they got we straightened it up, and we we got home in a plane. In the same we plane, took off, yeah. yeah. Now your plane didn't have any nose art on it, did it? Anything? Nose art, as they called it, they painted no, somebody no. on the nose. No, see, I, I don't know. I think we flew different ones. Oh, know? okay. And then I flew with different crews several times when I became a toggleer. Uh, so you were a gunner, and yeah. then they made you a toggleer. Yeah. And it, for, for people that don't know that are listening, a toggle ear is a man who drops the bombs. Yeah, well, there's a switch. He said, tell you how to set it up, but it's going to be so many feet on the ground or whatever, or, or, or all at once. How many bombs did you normally carry? Oh, I, I can't remember. It's depending on what size they were. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Sometimes they would stick up and you'd have to go and knock them out, you know. The little clips on them, they would hold them and they would be hanging there. So you would just release them and drop That's them. why the Bombay doors are open and you're, yeah. you're there looking down in space too. Oh yeah. It's kind of a dangerous job I to have. That never bothered me that high. <laughs> I always well, had my foot on something solid. <laughs> then I had him jump out of parachute or anything. But when, uh, uh, any other missions, uh, Lynn? Uh, well, they were all... We, we caught flat and sometimes we didn't... Uh, you bombed Berlin a couple of times, didn't you? Hmm? Did you bomb Berlin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we bombed it twice. Twice? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, did you point, yeah. did you experience much anti-aircraft fire when you were going well, into Berlin? Well, this, this one where we went on, every bomb group in E were on this mission. And I think they had a traffic cop up there <laughs> directing the guys coming in, you know, because actually I, we heard that they were dropping bombs on the airplane. There were so many, you know. They were dropping bombs on what? Bombs on our own people. You know, I mean, it, oh. there were so many, I, I don't know if it really happened or anything, but they, mm. they, they had like a traffic. <laughs> you know, so many they, planes there. I, I don't know, I'm a little guy, I didn't hear all <laughs> the big stuff, but uh, there was a lot of airplanes. And a lot of them, uh, that, so I went to uh, one of the, there's an article that I, mm -hmm. They went, in, they went into Russia. They had wounded the Lord, and they went in. How were they treated when they... Uh, not, not bad, but they took a lot of their personal stuff. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, they, uh, actually, they were, at first, they didn't have any, any doctors or somebody to take care of. It's in that, uh, in that article that mm -hmm. they all went through. But it, they didn't treat him hard or harshly or whatever, but... Well, know, they didn't treat him real good yeah, either. Yeah. yeah. Sort of indifferent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they, and he kind of took some personal things, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we didn't hear about it until later, you know, how, what we were on. Did you make close friends with your crew while you were overseas? Yeah. Yeah. We, the officers you were there they were well, actually they weren't they weren't full officers what do they call them um flight officers yeah they were just one step more right yeah but uh they were all good guys and we got along and, uh, and i said they they did a good job running that you know taking you were awarded several medals for yeah, your service. Well, the Air Medal and then the, the, the uh, Oak Leaf Cluster. Uh, so you, an Air Medal, you flew five combat missions and you got an Air Medal, is that correct? Yeah. And then an Oak Leaf Cluster for every five after that? That's not what it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you pin it on the ribbon. Right? So you got an uh, air medal and two Oak Leaf Questers no, on just it. one. Oh, just one? Yeah. Actually, you should have had three then if you flew 15 missions. Yeah. Well, I tell you, uh, I flew with other one, like five of them that were there. You uh, flew with five different crews? Yeah, different. Or uh, different planes? Uh, different. Crews, yeah. Oh, different crews. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I think that uh, it, they just give you those medals for if you're in flight. I know even if you're not in the Air Corps, if you did something in a flight or something, you get an air. My brother was, uh, he was a colonel and he flew the 15th Air Corps. Out of Italy, yeah, he got uh, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and he flew, I think, over thirty missions and something. Wow. Like that. What was your brother's name? Hmm? What was your brother's name? 
Robert Robert Kurtz. Robert Kurtz. Uh huh. Um, yeah, he uh, he went to uh, flight schools and he was a, a, a second a lieutenant. Second lieutenant. Uh, yeah. In the, in the um, engineer. He asked where he came up. So he he was in the cavalry. <laughs> In the that's, what, what, that's what he list, enlisted in the cavalry. Cavalry in Cincinnati, because mm -hmm. he liked horses and all that. And all of a sudden, they says, "We're never going to go for a year." And they say, "Goodbye, dear. I'll see you in a year." So they they had to go. To, I forget. He went somewhere down in Tennessee, and he was in the cavalry, and then he was out west, and then he got into this engineer corps. That's where he got a commission. And then he went into cadets. <laughs> and he became a B-17 pilot. I see, yeah. yeah. And he was with the 15th Air Force yeah. now. When you were in England, did you ever have any USO shows or anything like that? UFO. USO shows, like Bob Hope or? Oh, uh, there was one of them. Uh, Let's see, I can't remember. He was a singer. A singer? Yeah. Some singer. What? Anyway, uh, they used to have a, a, a radio operator that could get it on his radio or mm -hmm. uh, all you soldiers, Marines. This is Johnny Mercer and his music. Uh -huh. yeah. He would have a program for the GI, yeah. and he could pick that up mm -hmm. on that. I was traveling to get to it, the target. Did you bring any souvenirs home from the war when you came back? Just that, I, I can't find it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I really messed it in, in my older years. I, I said, what did what, what, you, what you lose? That, that piece of flak, I, I, oh. that was the only souvenir. Oh, I you had. kept that? Yeah. Oh and, my uh, God, and you don't know? It was an 88, because I put it on a piece of paper and I could draw a line around it. It was an 88. Yeah. It, it had threads, you know, I could. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, uh. You've, you, lo you've lost it somewhere, huh? Yeah, but I'll tell you what, uh, it was, at the end of the war, the Germans had this little fighter. He could only stay up for about 15 minutes or something. And I, I don't know the name of it. <laughs> was it a jet? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, was some, it didn't have a prop on it. Yeah. It was like a rocket. Yeah. It could only be up there for about 10 or 15 minutes. Our 51s would just sit out there. They couldn't do anything because these guys were really fast, you know. So when I was, I was doing the toggle air there, they would come up from one, 12 o'clock high in the formation. <laughs> Come flying down, and anyway, they make some passes like that. And then all of a sudden, they, they couldn't, they had to glide down. Then RP 51s came in. <laughs> you could see them attacking these. That was the German jet planes. Hmm? That was the German jet planes yeah, that they. It was some kind of a little thing. Or a rocket. And I thought, like a rocket, but they couldn't only really stay up there for a small amount of time. And when they did, they just had a drop. They you could see them parachuting out and whatever. And the 51s would come in and, <laughs> and, hmm. and get, get them because they, they couldn't do anything until they made their passes. The 109s, they were bad enough. That was the mushroom. Yeah. That was the popular one. Was your plane ever shot by any of the German fighters? No, I don't think that uh, it was no flak was it. Mostly flak? Yeah. 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 They call what they call the pursuit curve, and then they threw their belly up, it was all armor plating. But uh, the 51s did a real job. They, they, were, they called them our, our little friends. Mm hmm. But they, they, they did good. Did you ever have any Tuskegee airmen flying around you? You remember the black guys, the red tails? My brother, who was a pilot, 
he thinks highly of those people, the, the, uh, the Air Force people. Yeah. Yeah. Because they flew with that. Yes, out of Italy. Yeah. yeah. Is your brother still living? No. No. I yeah. see. Um, what, other, what other missions can you tell us about? We had Berlin and Munich well, and Kassel. Uh, ha ha Hamburg, that was a, that was kind of tough one. It was? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, that, that, that look, I just can't remember. <laughs> yeah. All the names, railroad yards and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but Munich, those were, and that castle, Oh, oh Rannenberg. Mm -hmm. And it was an hour up near Berlin. That was tough. You see that risk there. But uh, the, the flak was always the worst part. Yeah. Okay. You see the red burst and you knew you were, you know, you, you, were in you could hear it like. Yeah. That's throwing stones on a tin roof, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, some were worse than others. Yeah. But the, so, after your 15 missions, what did they do? Send you home, or what? Or, uh, well, it's part of the. Uh, Actually, our. Uh, when did you when did you leave your uh, England to come home? Well, was it was the war shortly, over? Shortly after, it was over. We, we, we got a, a crew of people who were going back to the states, and we were taking planes back. The same route, kind of, as we went the northern route. You flew the northern route yeah. back home. Huh? Yeah. That's a pretty dangerous route in certain times of the year, I understand. Yeah, have different weather. Yeah. But uh, my uh, top turret gunner, the engineer gunner, mm -hmm. uh, he came home with me, the same group of people. But the other people, I didn't know who they were. They were officers and whatever. You know. mm -hmm. What was his name, do you remember? Uh, I hit it. I got the name on there. That's all right. Uh, um, where did you land when you came home? The same route up there, up to up to by Maine, Bangor, Maine. Bangor, Maine. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I came home by train. I went out. We had like a furlough, and, and then I went to Santa Ana, California. Santa Ana? Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. Why'd you go out there? That's where we were going for a reassignment for South Pacific. I was going to go on an A-26. You were going to be on an A-26? Yeah. Oh and, boy. And anyway, while we were there, wait for, you know, Sam was getting home and the war ended. So you were being prepared to fight in the Pacific also? Yeah, we were for reassignment. That's what they call it, reassignment yeah. for the South Pacific. And you were going to be on the A-26, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. That's quite a plane. Yeah. Did you fly on an A-26? Yeah. Uh, I really wanted to get on a B-25, but I'm happy I got on a 17. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that was a plane. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you're in California when the Japanese surrender then? Yeah. And what and happens then, to... And then I came back. Well, I went up to Columbus. And I got discharged. And you got discharged in Columbus? Yeah. But on my discharge papers, it says I didn't get out until 46. But I got out in 45, late 45, maybe around, I don't know, mm -hmm. September, um, were you discharged at Columbus? At Columbus, yeah. I, I see. But I had uh, made another so We had night CQ. We were, that was a, something to keep us busy, you know, because mm -hmm. we had to wait for a number to come up. And uh, anyway, I used to come home. I, could, I would get off three days. 
and uh, I'd come home. Mm -hmm. I'd some home or I'd some back up. And you always get a ride. That's fun. Um, uh, I was curious, did you graduate from high school? Yeah, that's the vocational. Uh, the vocationals. But, uh, good. The <laughs> it wasn't uh, that books and stuff. Uh, so that counted for your high school yeah. uh, diploma. Yeah. Well, you had Easter, uh, uh, English, and stuff like that. Uh huh. Algebra, mm -hmm. you know, math, and that. But uh, well, you must have done very well because you were going to be trained as a cadet to begin with. Yeah. And then at the convenience of the government, you end up being a gunner. Yeah. yeah. But all but all the air crews, I mean, they were right. guys going to graduate from flight school and all that. And boy, I tell you, all that you couldn't say, remember Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you, uh, if you, could you tell us uh, where you were at when you heard about Pearl Harbor, what you were doing? Uh, on December the 7th of 41? Yeah. When did you first hear about that? Uh, not the, uh, a while back, I could tell you, but hmm? I, I, I wasn't married. I was single, you know. Hmm. Uh, I know I, was, I used to sell papers and deliver papers. Mm -hmm. I have a paper around it. And probably that's where I think I kind of well. sell extras. It was, you know, they have an extra come out. Did you, when did you first know about the atomic bomb? I just can't remember. Have you had any thoughts about us dropping the atomic bomb on the Japanese? Never. Well, that was Truman. You know, I voted for Truman. Mm -hmm. uh, I really believed in him. Right. And uh, I uh, wasn't much for Roosevelt. But, mm -hmm. uh, I was over in se overseas when Roosevelt died. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, he died on the 12th of April, 45. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was overseas yet then. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, Roosevelt, my, my dad being in a business like he was, he, he wasn't too good for small business people. Uh -huh. uh, that dad couldn't get the different things for his products. While you were in the Air Force overseas, did you have a girlfriend back here at home? Yeah. That was all the time. The guys would get all these letters, you know, they were I, I never had any. Uh, well, when did, uh, yeah. when did you meet your wife? And how did you meet her? Uh, I, had a, a, I had a buddy, Fred Klein. Who? Fred Klein. Uh -huh. He was a, he was in the infantry, or artillery, or something like that. I don't know. But he was in a battle on the boat. And uh, anyway, I went to he went I went to high school. I mean, he lived in Coryville, and I used to hang out with a group of guys up there. And uh, anyway, after the war. We 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 go on an island clean boat and they have dancing. She, we we didn't have enough cuts and the dancing girl so we pulled in the dock got down. <laughs> so we didn't do much dancing. They get the enough dirt up. But uh, anyway, moonlight gardens up in Coney Island. So anyway, he met a girl in the time and. He got married. How did you meet your wife? Well, it was through this girl that that Fred married. Uh, they, where'd you meet her at? Uh, at a, a, a high school prom. High school prom? Yeah. What was your wife's name? Uh, Robertson. 
her first name? Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Robertson. Yeah. And you met her at a high school prom. Yeah, she was with a, she was with a date, and I was with a blind date from Fred Klein's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Got me a date. So anyway, the four, three of us, were all at the table, and I, I didn't like the way this guy was. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't like the way he was treating her, or what? Well, he, he was different. He, but uh, anyway, I kind of, I didn't know the one off. <laughs> I, but I was more attention to Elizabeth. So a few days later, I called her to get a date, and she had another appointment or whatever. And then I called her again, and we got a date. I see. And then, how long did you go with your wife? Oh, quite a while. I guess a year, maybe. I, I have to look. I have to look up some of my history books. <laughs> what school did she graduate from? Hughes High School. Oh, did she? Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, but it was her prom. She she was just graduating. Yeah. And I, I guess she's two years old, younger than me. When did you guys get married? 1948. 1948? Yeah. Where'd you get yeah. married at? Uh, 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 Annunciation Church. In, in, Clifton. in, in Clifton? Yeah. Uh huh. She, beca she became, became Catholic. And uh, we were married at Annunciation Church. So she converted to yeah, Roman to Catholicism yeah. and to get married? Yeah. I see. Did your wife have a job? Did she work anywhere? Well, she worked at, uh, it wasn't a big store. Big store it was a big. <laughs> Downtown? Yeah, in the infants department. Maybelline Crew or well, Shillitoes? Well, that's we can. Then she, I think, uh, or McAlpin's. I oh, think. McAlpin's? I think it was her next thing. She worked at McAlpin's? She's big store. McAlpin's, I think. Uh, but she always was in the children's department or infants or whatever. In the infant department? Yeah, so she was well educated on the children's stuff, you know. Uh, um, where, were you, where did you and your wife live? Well, that, that was a tough story. There wasn't any apartments. In '48, it was tough. You'd have to get an apartment about a month before you got married, you know. And, uh, uh, so I I got a I got an apartment over on I think it was Highland Avenue over in, up on top of the hill, off of McMillan Street, right? And down. Walnut Hills. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, Anyway, this was like a month or so before we were going to get married. So anyway, I put a down payment, $45. My wife said, oh, we ought to go see what, what curtains and whatever, you know. So I went to the guy and I wanted to see if I could go to the apartment, you know, which was just down the street. And, uh, he, he was kind of nasty. I don't know. I, I wasn't uh, a nice guy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went over to the apartment then, his apartment, and it, it had a, it's almost like the house where I live in. It has a big entrance hall. And it had like a first floor was a apartment, a second floor was a apartment. And my the cellar door was right in, off it. Anyway, I wanted to get my money back. He wouldn't let me go anymore. He said, yeah, he's not going to rent it to me. So anyway, his wife comes and he says, please go, please go. I'm in a, it's an entrance hall. I'm not in there private. And I wasn't going. I said, no, I'll go away for him. So anyway, he comes flying up out of the basement and there and ordered me out of his house, <laughs> you know? 
And I said, oh, I wanted my $45 back, huh? You're not going to rent me an apartment. And he's standing there with like almost feeling in the back of my head. And I opened the door and walked out. And I never got my $45. Mm. You never come around. But anyway, we, we, on Blue Rock Road, right next to Cutswater's Grove. Right next to who? Cutswater's Grove, mm -hmm. out in sure. White Oak. Yeah. yeah. There was a house, he was, and he was a professor at UC. Uh, it was almost like a dean of his head of the department. He was a nice guy, him and his wife and his daughter. And they were behind his house was a frame building, a cottage, no basement, no hot water, <laughs> like three rooms or whatever. So we rented that. And we really fixed it up real nice and all this that. <laughs> it was on eight acres. Wow. And uh, we had our all really wise, all of us guys, you know, and we would have campfires and picnics stuff and all, really neat. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, that was our first. <laughs> Your first house. <laughs> that she, she had a baby and I said, this can't, we gotta, go, we gotta move on. Because <laughs> my, my parents went to Clifton then yet. And I used to take showers and stuff. Because <laughs> we didn't have any hot water. And, it was, it was when it was a World War One officers. They say that's what he said it was an officers building. It was a little frame and it had a little front porch. And, mm -hmm. But it it was really. Where did you move from there then? To Evanston, Evanston, and uh, I uh, we were on the first floor. And two elderly women were on the second floor. And I had to fire the furnace and do that kind of stuff. And we stayed there for, I don't know how long, maybe a year or two. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, I, uh, I had one son, he was, he was born with a bad heart and he had an open heart surgery and all that kind of stuff. So I, I was able to buy a house on Rulison Avenue. On what? Rulison and Rulison. And Price Hill. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be close to my parents because they could babysit because he had to have surgery, open heart surgery. Back then it was unusual. Right. This was in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. 50s. It was crazy. And uh, he, he had it. He what? He had open heart surgery. Oh, okay. What was his name, your son? Gregory. Gregory? Yeah. yeah. Um, is that where you, did you buy the home there? I, I bought the house on Wilson, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right down from St. Teresa. Yeah. Is that where you raised your children or not? Uh, some of them, some, some half there, or they went to grade school or, or had a little couple grades more at St. William or whatever, you know. One, one graduated, my oldest girl, Karen, she was able to graduate from St. Teresa, where the other ones maybe had a, another grade to go or two grades. Did you move to another home? From yeah, on West A Street, there between Swear and... I see, and is that really where you raised your family? Yeah, it was close to Elder and Seton High School. And, and mm. uh, it's where they all grew up there. When you came home from the war, what did you do for a living then? What was your occupation? Well, I, uh, I worked for Stabit Sheet Metal. Who? Stabit Sheet Metal, before the war, even. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, yeah, I was working there and I went into the service. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I think I, I was on a Monday or a Tuesday, so I went down and I said, well, I'm back. He said, oh, could you wait till Friday? <laughs> you know, I just got out of service. Right. He said, could you wait till Friday? <laughs> so anyway, 
I started work there. And then he had a class for me and another guy was in his service on uh, Tuesday nights and lay out, how to lay out sheet metal shapes and so forth. And then uh, I worked up to where I could work, have a bench, shear, lay the stuff out, shear, punch, and bend it, whatever, weld it. And uh, anyway, he said to me, he said, oh, he, he said, if you guys get a better job or another job, don't, he said, you have to keep you here, you know. In other words, he didn't want us to stay there because of what he taught us, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went to Kirk and Bloom. Kirk big, and Bloom? Big outfit. Yes. Kirk and Bloom. They used to have a big advertisement over Crosley Field there. Did you? Yeah. With the you could see on the house from across from Center Field. Field. Yeah. And, uh, oh boy, there was a whole story there. Anyway, I got a job there and well, I was making one to do for uh, like metal machine cars or something. You know. Out there I was laying stuff out. Thousand pieces of this, hundred pieces. <laughs> How long did you work for Kirk and Bloom? I don't know. Uh, one of the salesmen there, he come up with an idea to start a company of his own, and his wife was a niece of Mrs. Kirk. So, uh, and she was, she didn't have any children, and his more stock was the fella. His wife was the niece. So anyway, he gets me, he wants me to leave Kirk and Bloom and start this company. And well, it's a long story, but I did. And they, Dick Bloom had had me in his office a couple of times. Hey, what do you want to leave? You want to leave? <laughs> and I said, well, when I took the chance, I said, it's something different. And Crook and Bloom, they had grandchildren work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Different employees, you know, it's mm -hmm. the hardest companies are. Was that Cook and Bloom or? Kirk, K I R K. K I R K, K Kirk and Bloom, yeah. Kirk and Bloom. Big, big outfit. Yeah. So, so did yeah. you leave them or? I, I went in with this guy. I didn't, I, I didn't invest in him. I'm, I'm the only guy who knows anything about sheet metal. And he, what was his name? Well, that was Mar Stock. Who? Mar Stock was the fellow that left Kirk and Bloom. Scott? Mar Stock. Mar Stock. Scott? S-C-O-T-T. -T. S -C -O -T -T? Stock like uh, S-T-O-C-K. Oh, Stock. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, anyway, it was on uh, Crookshank Road. And, uh, what was the name of that company? Uh, Mel Ben, he had a neighbor that was a salesman. He was a food salesman, you know. I don't know what you call him. It took me to grocery stores. Uh -huh. he, so he didn't know a blueprint. <laughs> he turned a blueprint every which way, he would know which was right. So he would call out customers and I'd have to go because he couldn't. Anyway. It didn't work out well. Uh, Mar Stock, he, when he was working at uh, Kirk and Bloom, he had CG&E as a customer for the power stations that they, and they'd add to them, you know, mm -hmm. like up Fetchord and went down the river. He would, they had to make duck work, like, almost like, for, uh, where they'd lay the, wires and the cables and stuff. Going down, up and down, around, instead of being out in the open or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I figured up all the stuff and got the waste and he quotes it, he get a way to end. So he gets the job, but we're not union. So we gotta have somebody make it. So there was A and E butcher company. With the two, two brothers that started a small school. They were a union. So I got this all detailed out, all these 
पर हम सीख रहे हैं चित्राते हैं नहीं पूछ रहे हैं ओए ओए ऐसे ही ही वुड हैव टू गिव द स्टफ एंड देन ही ऑल हैव टू डू द वर्क यू नो बट ऑल हैव टू डू फॉर मेक सो एनीवे ही गॉट मी अस आफ्टर अ वेरी वेल एंड टॉक मी इन द कन वर्किंग फॉर दे एनी पूछ रहे हैं How do you spell that? A initials Al and Eugene. A N E P U T S H A. Butcher. Butcher. Yeah. Okay. Well, they were mostly in kitchen equipment, like hoods, ovens, you know, stainless steel. Mm hmm. And they had about fifteen guys working, and uh, it's all union, and. Uh, Anyway, I come. I'm, I'm I'm a black iron guy. I did stuff for GE and uh, machine tool outfit, Miller machine and that. So anyway, the, the, this company that I was this this is sheet metal company, they had a, a an outfit that would sell this to the restaurant people. Mm -hmm. And then come to butcher and have them make it, see. but they would do all the engineering. So it was the profiles were all the same. It was just different footage, twenty foot, ten foot, five foot. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he, this cockle was his name. He sells out to an outfit in Chicago, which did their own fabricating, and uh, so that knocked butchers out. And anyway. They have to lay off all these guys, <laughs> and uh, I, I, but I had a car and a fuel ticket, you know, and so forth. So anyway, I start bringing in all these black iron stuff. These what? But what they call black iron, you know, uh, sheet metal. Mm -hmm. well, this was all I did stuff for Frisch's restaurant. Uh, uh, Jim Blackwood, Carter's restaurant, mm -hmm. and the different things. But anyway, I built up a lot of the uh, GE, uh, the other two outfits, mm -hmm. Bond and all of them. So anyway, they they got a good business going, and they they had about maybe twenty people, and. Uh, Anyway, uh, they were treating me pretty good. <laughs> you know, where uh, at the other place, I went to work for them uh, for less money than what I was making at Kirkland Room. You know, and, I, and then he joins this West Mills Country Club and all this kind of stuff. And I'm working day and night on Kirkland. I saw the garbage truck with the incinerator. He's got there. Night and day, I saw the sun go up and the sun go down. So I said, "Okay, I quit." I went with the butchers, and I stayed there and was, did, did real well. Did, uh, did you stay there till you retired? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I retired when I was seventy and a half. But nobody, none of the guys in the shop wanted me <laughs> to retire because the two brothers were different. So anyway, I retired, and uh, so now you, you retired in 1995. Yeah, when I was seven and a half. Because, yeah. And that's what I. That's what my subsidies. No, subsidy. Social Security? Uh, something was, <laughs> something that you come in relation to, uh, uh, you know, I think it was still something with the Social Security. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, now, they're down to one guy. Well, I, when I left, it was 20. Wow. And that's how things have gotten. Yeah. Um, how many children did you and your wife have? Seven. Seven? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember their names? Yeah. I, 
<laughs> I, I didn't mean that like it sounded. Yeah, yeah. Karen, Mark, Greg, Virginia, uh, Christopher, Joseph, and Bill. Did I miss anything? Uh, are all of your children still living? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's my, one of my grand, grandchildren. Yeah, they're all living. Uh -huh. And roughly how many grandchildren do you have? Oh, 14, I think. Yeah. 14? Yeah, I got four great-grandchildren. Four great-grandchildren, yeah. And uh, is your wife still living? No, she passed away in uh, uh, 02, a year and a day after 9-11. A, a year and a day after 9-11? Uh, September the 12th. 2002? Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what church did you folks go to? Uh, St. Williams. St. Williams. Yeah. In Price Hill. Yeah. 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 Um, Ryan, uh, do you have any questions you would like to ask? A couple. You mentioned when you were you went to Roger Bacon, and but then you went to the aviation school. Yeah. What was your? How did you get the interest in aviation? Was there a well, I was. They, they were a campaign, I guess you'd call it, for people to to join the airport. Join, join the cadet, they learn to fly an airplane. <laughs> and uh, but you had to have an aviation background, you know. So well, this, where did you get that interest? Were you always interested in planes growing up as a kid? Yeah, you know, I used to. I used to go out to Lunkin Airport when you get a quarter ticket, a pass for, you could travel anywhere on Sunday. Yes, oh yeah, the Cincinnati buses, yeah. Yeah, so I would go out to the Lunkin Airport and there was a, the Aronka airplane was made out there. Aronka? My mother was his nanny when, when my mother came from Minnesota, the country, the farm. Mm -hmm. She and uh, she came to Cincinnati because uh, her mother's brother lived in Cincinnati. Her name was Monifer Ng, but they took the Ng off in you know, German. <laughs> so it's just Monifer. So she came down and lived with them. And then uh, with a nanny, in, uh, with the Jewish people, big homes, uh, just outside of Norwood, I guess. Avondale? Huh? In Avondale? Well, not Avondale, but uh, well, there's a golf course over there. Golf Manor? Golf Manor, yeah. Maybe or, 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 I'm or, 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 talking about. Uh, yeah. But they're big uh, homes. Just, just, uh, just I thought Reading Road. I'll think of it in a second. <laughs> Macatewa Country Club. Right around there. Yeah, north of Bond Hill. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That area yeah, up. yeah. And uh, anyway, oh, this, uh, oh yeah. she, she was a, a nanny, took care of the children. Mm -hmm. She would go uh, to Michigan with them and whatever. And one of them was. Uh, the guy that owned a rock airplane. Aranta, yeah, I can't. Carl Freelander. Who? Hey, Carl? Car Carl Freelander. Carl Freelander. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, I used to go out there, and they had a shop there. And that was, they got one hanging, I think, still in the, in the uh, tower, or whatever you call it. Uh huh. And, uh, See, the nose of it comes up and I'll you know, slant like you know, it's uh, just straight out. But it was a real odd looking airplane. Like, anyway, I'd go out there and hang out with them. I was just interested in the airplane. And my buddy Fred, Fred Klein, at that fellow, mm -hmm. he got a job out there with Queen City Air. They took guys from school that would do odd things, you know, like that, in these hangars. But, but, uh, how did you meet Fred? Did you know him from school? Fred Klein? Yeah, how did you yeah, meet him? Yeah, at school. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think it was. I think the neighborhood you're thinking of was. Is it Roselawn? Roselawn, maybe. No, you know it's uh, it's like the Reading Road goes. There's a big hotel. Uh, I, I haven't been over in years, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I know there's a golf course nearby, and there's a parkway. Yeah. Not, not Avondale. Sounds like Avondale. Well, these are big homes, yeah. and now uh, it's, it's not that big. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, Is it not, not blue but, ash? But, but it's still, there's, there's still nice. Not blue ash? No. That's all right. They renamed it up neighborhoods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, how old were you when you first got, went on a plane? Into a plane? Yeah, it was the first time you took a plane ride. I guess I was about 15, maybe. Was that at? A small plane out of Lucky Airport. My dad and I went up. You just paid a guy and they fly around? Yeah. No, he knew somebody. That was it. He knew somebody that flew. And we went up. Just buzzed around, came down. So what'd you think? Yeah, I, I like flying. I was always interested in flying. Okay. Yeah. Sunday, September the second, I'm going up in a B seventeen and I'm gonna take my one grandson. <laughs> and I've been doing this every year for the past all my kids have taken that. All but one Karen, she lives in Dallas. And I took up several other people, and now my grandson I'm taking up Saturday. Out there at Lunkin? Uh, at Lunkin. And I've been up every time. And I just, I love that play. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, when you, were, when you were on those missions, can you describe what it was, uh, I guess, was it pretty cold? Oh uh, yeah, we had heated. Uh, we have uh, silk gloves and woolen gloves and electric, electric heated uh, suits like that. You know. You'd have to have the ammunition in the chamber or else it would freeze. You could, you know what I mean? Because you, you could shoot it out and you loosen it up, but you could never pump the projectile in there. You know, we be all filled up, and you, 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 your oxygen mask gets steamed up. You know, it's icy. You have to break it. It gets it pretty darn cold. How long were you usually in the air on a typical mission? If it's see, uh, we we would always take off. I would say right around noon time, somewhere there. And we all would fly around till we got all together. The whole, you know, 90 second bomb crew. And then we would fly over, across the Dover, like, and then the Zyder Z. And then we would have other groups meeting, you know, we'd join up and then go in on targets. Sometimes we go ourselves on a target when we anybody else. But that down Munich, there was a whole bunch of us went to Munich at that time. But uh, what was your question again? How long were you usually up in the air? Well, we time? would come back. Now this is <laughs> this is crazy, but we would come back in the evening around I would say five o'clock or something. And the fog would come in over England. We would have to keep my hand and run around shooting flares up. We'd all be in formation, planes shooting up flares, wounded aboard, <laughs> you know? And then we'd come down and there's an overcast. So we're all in formation yet till we get down. And then you hear guys, where the hell is that? How is it? We winged it, wing tip, wing tip, and you didn't see nothing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we come down through that overcast, you know, and then, oh boy, look. 
So then the, the guys with the wounded, they, they would break away, you know. But we would all be in the formation yet to you know, stay together, but the ones would break away. That had one other boy. And that was, oh, and then you go to the shot line and you get a bum. <laughs> How do you get a shot away? Guys would take their canteen and they'd pour it in and on the 25th mission. Back at, you know, you, back at the barracks, you know, you, that's the end. <laughs> they flew their 25th mission and they <laughs> were drinking their booze, you know. But, uh, Anyway, I, I couldn't do it. I was too young. I didn't drink it. <laughs> Who was that of your group? The, of your plane? Who was your... Uh, the, the whole... Uh, uh, you know, Jimmy Doolittle. And his, we, they called us Jimmy Doolittle. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Doolittle and his flying circus. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be going over, and the British would be coming back. We would bomb daylight. And the English didn't do it. They bomb in the dark. So anyway, you'd see them scattered all over the place. <laughs> We'd be. Did you did you uh, uh, do uh, inter intermingle at all with with the British uh, pilots and, and uh, crews at all? Did you have much in contact with those guys? No, uh, we we weren't near any of them. You know, we see people that you know, were in town or something, maybe or, you know that way, but not not as flying. Or they'd be waving to us. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys uh, hung out together off, off no, no, but I off mean, the ground time. I, I I we could go into town when we didn't weren't flying the next day, which was down the road, and guys. We all had the same kind of a bicycle, you know. <laughs> That's how you could get into town by bike. Yeah, yeah, and some of the guys that had, they come back there, <laughs> they didn't know whether they were riding a bicycle or what, you know. But uh, anyway, they, uh, we would maybe see them in town, but uh, they were maybe on for a little I wasn't sure if you guys got any competition between the British and the Americans. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, uh, I remember uh, one time when we when we brought the when we were coming in the, like uh, coming in over in England around, and we'd be up with a fighter plane or something, and he'd do a slow roll or something, he'd do something. <laughs> he'd wave, you know. Or, you know, I think that's where I remember really where I came in contact with her. We were coming into north of England there. Where I think. North well, of England. When we brought the plane in. Uh, uh, um, in Belgium, Shuttle Road, front, uh, No, no, uh, when we brought the plane from home, when I first went overseas. Oh, uh, the northern route. Uh, uh, through uh, and Greenland we, and we, Iceland and. Then we came into. Ireland and then Scotland. Scotland, yeah, that was, we would be over there while we were coming. He, he'd come flat along, <laughs> and he'd, you know, he'd do a really <laughs> lose out of team, you know. But that's the only time I remember, other than them coming from a raid, you know, where they were just flying and they did, did come across. So when you weren't doing a mission, what, what were you usually doing when you weren't actually in the air? What were you doing uh, off, like uh, on your off time in, in England? Oh, yeah. What kind of things were you, were you able to do or allowed to do? Or? Well, one time I went out with uh, the, uh, the airfield with the, you know, with the runways and that were, me and the other fellow, we were sitting there. And they were 51s were taken off and landing, and taken off, and well, they were just practicing to you know, take off and land. And one guy came over, hey, how would you, would you like to go up? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So they, we were piggybacking a 351. Yeah, they'd take us up for flying, and we'd just come down there. But he would do <laughs> some exciting things, and yeah, we'd come back. But they were just. 
crutches and taken off from the landing, whatever they were doing on it. Did you guys usually fly with on missions with 51s? Was that what you usually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were always there, except when they had those little things. That Wherever they were, they were rocket planes or they were, they weren't, I don't think they were jet, because they, they were little stub-nosed things, they were ugly looking. Okay, okay. rocket planes, yeah, they're not jets, yeah. Yeah, uh, but they could only stay up there for a few minutes, and so the P-51s couldn't, couldn't compete, yeah. But they didn't make that many passes because they, they weren't there that long. And that's when, when I was, you know, Right, really saw them. And I was a tall girl, I'm in the bombardier seat. Were there and then they're 12 o'clock high. <laughs> oh, mm. they come fly. But were, were there other kind of aircraft that you ran into that, that you would encounter? Oh, yeah, encounter before that. See, that was really towards really the end, you know. Uh, those weren't many missions. But the M Messerschmitt. 109, the Emmy 109s, they were tough. They were tough. They were called we, what you call a, a pursuit curve. You know, those are the bombers group. These are fighter planes. So where they, they, they keep shooting at you, and they got a curve, you know? And then they'll throw their, they were armor plated underneath, and then they would throw it up on their side for the gunners, us, <laughs> you know? But they were they were tough. They were. Did, did they get close enough that you could actually see the German pilots? Yeah, you could you could not not distinguish real clearly, but you could see them. And they, they did that what they call them, they were right up to you, but, but then they threw that you hit all armor plate on it. So I don't I don't think uh, us gunners did much, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, the flak is what really got us. I guess it must have been really loud oh, in the plane. Well, you could you could see where it's just black puffs, and then where you see the fire, <laughs> kind of you know you're darn close. And then when you it's it sometimes it would get pretty heavy. You know. But it would get real loud. And oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Could you communicate with your crewmen? Yeah, yeah. But you don't, uh, you, you, you don't, you don't use the talk. to the airways clear, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, I was, when I was a right waste gunner, the radio, radio operator had a, a box of, I can't remember what they call it. It doesn't slack when it's slack or something, but it strips like a like a straw. One of the strips of aluminum foil and has a crease in it. It makes it kind of stiff. He would have a, a camera well in the radio room, and he'd have a big box of this stuff, and he'd go one one thousand one one thousand one, and he got so he saw <laughs> this thing, you know, you know what I mean. But they were supposed to, you know, when it flutters down, that's supposed to mess up the radar or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> but anyway. No one ever did a study on it to see whether it was uh, yeah. effective. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you, there was when we went over to Zyder Z, there was a, a where it was in Amsterdam or where Holland in there. He would shoot up at it, you know, and he would he would communicate <laughs> with our radio operators. You know, they could pick stuff up. Uh, but that was always the welcome. You know, he had to go through his stuff. And I don't know if he shot anybody down or whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> I but guess would your gun get pretty hot when you were firing? Yeah, it did. Uh, you know. I was wondering if you got hot to the touch. Like no, well, you, yeah, you feel on a barrel. It's air cooled, you know, it's kind of shallow around it with holes in it. But uh, it, uh, it, I flew in the turret, ball turrets, 
several times. Now that's that's kind of neat. <laughs> well, you How do you fit in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, I was right in the same with the waste gunners. And then the radio room was in the next thing. And then the bomb, bomb bay door, bomb bay, and then the crew chief was up in the top for it. And a pilot, crew pilot. When you were in the bow turret underneath the airplane, were you in there when they landed? No, 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 you don't, no, 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 no you, you don't, you're not supposed to be there. <laughs> I thought they got little guys to huh? uh, well, do you, that. You can, you can get in there pretty cautiously. The guy... How do you get out of there, though? Uh, well, it <laughs> rolls you around. Know? You know, uh, yeah, the, the, the oldest guy in the crew was our ball turret guy. He, he was up in his 30s, like, you know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was uh, was going to ask, how did you, uh, when you were being trained to be a gunner, did you, did you? Uh, oh, we had, uh, we had a, a course, we just call it, you know, almost like a golf course. <laughs> and it just little roadways, and then they'd have pigeons flying up, you know, where they, uh, at different angles, uh -huh. but you're you're in a pickup truck. Okay. You know, with a, a mm -hmm. machine gun. It's the same machine gun, but you're in a truck. Yeah. Train. Yeah. And uh, then we would go go this course and fly around and shoot at the different up in the air. Then we do on a range, we shoot. You know, a pigeon. What do they call it anymore? <laughs> Where you moved around, it's a sport now. Oh, you of have, course. Ski? Uh, hmm? Ski. Ski, yeah. 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 We did that once in a while. But. And where were you doing, where were you, where were you trained, where were you at when you were being trained to do that? Uh, uh, in, uh, 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 where the gambling joints are. Where the what? Oh, okay. at Nevada? Yeah, uh, the big casinos. Vegas. In Las Vegas. Oh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas, mm -hmm. yeah. They had a base there? We, they had a base there, out there? In that, Vegas. Yeah, Gunnery. Yeah, we were out on the desert. And uh, they were, well, I remember one time some big general was going to come here or something. And they hit a, a tractor trailer with a, like a bus, you know, like a, instead of a, a, a freight you know, trailer, this was like a bus being pulled by a tractor. Mm -hmm. you know. They would load us up into that and go out and drop us off on the highway. This is when this big general or something kind of, and pick up the trash or whatever. <laughs> we did that one time. We were just got some students, you know. <laughs> We cleaned mm -hmm. up uh, the desert for this general coming in. You know, we used to say they used to say uh, if, if, if pick it up if it's white, and if you can't pick it up, paint it white. <laughs> <laughs> Did you run any uh, any generals or anything in England? Did anybody of note come through? Uh... No, but uh, Jimmy Doolittle, he he came. In. He came in as our the whole, uh, commander of the Eighth Air Force. Yeah, because they called it, they called us in a Jimmy Doolittle and his flying circus. <laughs> so, did you actually see Doolittle? Did you actually? No. Uh, I don't know whether where he was stationed even. You know, unless he went to different groups, he, he could do that. But yeah. I, I doubt it. Uh, I knew I had a couple more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you, I guess you didn't have an interest in staying in aviation after the war? Did you ever think you wanted to work for an airline or anything? No. Uh, well, I, uh, I got it in sheet, oh, I was in sheet metal. 
Not, not like photos and bounce pads there. This is things made of sheet metal. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go to any reunions of your outfit? I think I, no, I didn't. They were always up, out of town. I was married, and, no, I, I didn't. Have you ever communicated with anybody? Well, there was, I go like first, second, third, in September, the B-17s go to be at Lincoln Airport. Right. And I'll go be there Sunday. <laughs> oh, you'll be there? I'll be there. I, I, I can't, I can't count how many times I, I just got to go up. <laughs> and I do come, they, I, do I, they let you go in free, which you tell them who you are? Uh, <laughs> it, it, that, it, the money, that, that keeps it flying. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it takes right. a lot of money to oh, keep yeah. the thing going. I get a discount there. Yeah, but uh, I take I was taking two of my kids up and me, you know, if you want. And uh, do you know Bob Burkhart? Bur yeah, yeah. We're right. He handles those flights. He's the veteran there with uh -huh. the flight jacket on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One time I went up, there was a woman flying. Yeah. yeah she, I don't know if she flew the How whole long of a flight is that they give you? Hey, work hard. You know, I, you know him, yeah. I, I don't know if through that. Uh, I don't know if some That's just a popular name, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, anyway, it's a... Uh, you go up every year, uh, huh? Yeah, I, I guess... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out there this year and, and watch you go up. Well, I take, uh, I took uh, friends up already, and, and uh, I don't know, it's... How long ago did you start doing that? What was the first time you went up on, on you know, when they started doing that? Has it been like 20 years or well, 10 years? Or? Well, I would say at least 10 years ago. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Do you still go over to Lincoln Airport uh, just for fun? Well, you know, what was it? I went over there. Uh, but I haven't, uh, not like I used to before I went, even after I got out of service. And that, uh, they used to have, uh, I have an air, a main airplane where you could fly. Uh, you know, model airplanes, mm -hmm. big ones. Yeah. Self radio operated. I got into that, and uh, they they had a place where they, right across the street from the airport where they had some stuff going on and right. flying. I had a question. I, I remember now. You, your brother. Uh, so when did he join before you or after? Oh Is yeah. He older than you or younger? He's older. On on Reading Road over there, but Bond Hill or whatever, mm -hmm. there was a, a, a cavalry home guard. Or, there was a cavalry in it. Was that on Victory Parkway or? Well, it's like the yeah, right at the back. It was on Victory Parkway. Yeah, he he liked horses. We used to go for ten dollars ride for it. Not there, but different places in White Oak and places. They'd have you can run out of horses. So we did that. So he goes and joins up. I guess he was maybe in high school yet, I think. Yeah. So he joins up and uh, he, he's out there. And you know, I walk right to it. <laughs> he, he dress the horses down and then they ride them, you know. So anyway, uh, that was the Home Guard or the National Guard, whatever they call it then. They said they had a song there. Goodbye, dear, I'll see you in a year. Well, he was one of those guys that had to go. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and he was, when he went, he, he, he retired in the service. After the war, he had a big, he was in the, the Pentagon and he was in headquarters over in Paris, France. Different, uh, mm -hmm. pretty high up. He was a colonel. 
but he, he flew 30, 30, 30 some missions. How did he go from Calvary into aviation? That, that, that was a crazy thing. He, he, when he went to, on this bivouac, or whatever you call it, he was down in, Na I think, Nash, near Nashville, Tennessee, as a, as a cavalry, you know. Then he went out west, and he was in a movie somewhere with me or so and so, <laughs> you know, where the horse was running. Or, and then uh, he went into uh, the engineering. He, he got a, a, a maybe a scholarship or thing, but he transferred, and he became an officer. A lieutenant. And then he goes into the Air Corps as a lieutenant and learns to fly the regular route now. And he went to overseas. Mm. And he. Where was he stationed overseas? I, I really don't know. He was with the uh, 15th Air Force, 15th you said. 15th Air Force. And, and they yeah. were at Fogia. Uh -huh. They were at Foggia, Italy, F-O-G-G-I-A. Yeah, that's you know, not in the South for me. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, that's where the Tuskegee Airmen were, too. Well, he, he, he flew all those other flights when the Cold War stuff, you know, flying the food over and flying whatever. He carried the atomic bomb, I think it was, or some bomb from Florida down there to, it was an airfield in Florida, back and forth, round trip, right? also the Cold War stuff. Mm -hmm. Wherever mm -hmm. the Air Force was you know, still operating some way or another, he was involved in some of that. He Did flew you? the B-52 and a B-30 something. I went a up B -36. to- B-36. Well, you go up to uh, uh, Dayton, I went up there, that one big one up there, he flew that day. The B-52? The B-52? I guess that was it. The, yeah. The parachutes helped it stop. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anyway, man, the, the sides are all buckled up. I, I mean, how in the world that thing? It looked like you had like that window there. <laughs> A big square old thing. I couldn't believe that that thing flew. Up there, they had it in the hangar up there. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Did you have uh, Did you have other siblings other than your brother? I had a, a brother, another brother. He, he. He 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 was in the army, and then they were on maneuvers. And some way or another, somebody gets all fouled up, and he got injured. And then he got actually got a discharge in because he was hurt bad, you know, in, mm -hmm. in this maneuver business. It was just a foul of some way or other. But, uh, yeah, but there was just bomb with me. Um, yeah, he, he, I didn't even know it until he died. He, he, he got the Distinguished Flying Cross. When did he pass away, your, your one brother? Yeah. He was 74, 75. Yeah. But he, he was, uh, after the war, maybe he was older than that. Maybe he was 84. Because uh, he, he was with the Pentagon and he was over in France. And with the higher, you know, whatever you call it. But he, he had some big jobs. Really. Well, I got one last question. I was wondering, did you ever, have you ever done honor flight? Hmm? Honor flight, have you ever done that? Honor flight. Honor flight out at it. Oh, no, I, I'll tell you what, my, my daughter in Dallas and uh, son-in-law, uh, you know Eric Quinzel? Yes, well, we know who he is. Eric Kuhn. He was the head of the symphony here. Oh, yes, yes. He, he was in the uh, Pops. Pops, that's uh, yeah. right. Well, my son-in-law, he's very close to Eric Kunzel. He, uh, I don't know how to tell you all the connections. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But 
Bruni lives on uh, in uh, Maine, and they got Swan's Island. I went up there. I mean, we we're that close with Bruni and I to Swan's Island. And uh, anyway, she's got a garden by as big as this. And she's got a fence around it, and I gave her some day. I got day lilies, big, nice ones, not these tall uh, roadside day, day lilies. Anyway, I took some day lilies up, and she always emails me about how beautiful they are. Well, she's got a fence around it because the deer. <laughs> she got beautiful roses. So Rudy is still around. And anyway, uh, we went, I, I went up to Washington, Eric's last concert, uh, where he plays on 4th of July. Mm -hmm. We were there. And uh, anyway, I'm in a, this big limousine. They put me in this big limousine with Bruni as his wife. And Eric's sitting in the front seat with a driver. And, I, and uh, this, this guy that uh, was a singer, I can't think of. Something was in the paper about this singer. He was, anyway, we were sitting there waiting for him, and Eric said, that's <laughs> You know, so anyway, he come, and we're in a procession. And I didn't know anything, I didn't know, I seen all the red lights out of the, in the front of the cars in front of And we're going over to the Capitol. And we pull up in, and you know, uh, this big black woman, this real heavy woman singer. She was one of the singers. Anyway, we are getting out of the car and they've got the security stuff and all, whatever. And we're going into the Capitol. And we go into the statuary hall. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they got tables set up all over, you know. So Eric and I, we and they go over and they got the, a beer and a wine booth, you know. And then this Democrat says, now, now hear me, now hear me, no more beer and wine, no, no. So he was making an announcement that these other Democrats <laughs> were going to be introducing themselves, you know. But they left early. You could see, we were sitting with all these guys down in the, in the audience, you know. And they said they left early. What did they say? <laughs> oh, they wanted to see the farmers better or something like that. I don't know. They went out there to get the food. <laughs> All these politicians, you know. So anyway, Eric has us. We went out. He said, you go on that camera. They'll show you around downstairs, you know. He says, because I got to go up and say a few words or whatever. So we did that. We came back there. But uh, anyway, he went to China, and he was on his deathbed, almost, like, because he came back and had a concert up in Coney Island there, like, you know, and he didn't conduct part of it, and, and he, he died then. But uh, anyway, uh, how was it? Oh, we, when we were in, up there, and, and uh, we went to uh, the memorial. The one that was really the best, I thought, was Vietnam, I think, where they're walking. I thought that was really impressive. Uh, to get the Korean one, right? uh, the soldiers? Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Vietnam just has the name to the wall. Yeah. I thought I thought that really hit the spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they, why is it so big? Yeah. You know? uh, and they got the one with the names on it. And all yeah. that. So we took the, but uh, we we went up there because Kunzel was, you know, he's doing that Fourth of July deal. So, and we. 
spent some time with him. But uh, Bruni's still around. She lives down in Florida, really. But uh, she's I, I don't know. I think she's getting rid of the one in Swan's Alley. Mm -hmm. One year, something went wrong with the furnace in the winter. She don't go up there in the winter time. But it exploded or something, and the whole home was all sure was slit and whatever. And, but Eric. He did a lot of work up there. He built a little cottage right when he first moved there, and, and they got a tennis court. And, mm -hmm. uh, but he did a lot of work. I mean, he he worked. He didn't work around, you know. <laughs> but he was a neat guy. He he was a patriot for Cincinnati, and he's a patriot for this country. Believe right. me. And uh, my son-in-law was actually he was executor for the. It, she still takes him. He's a certified accountant, and uh, uh -huh. he's retired now. Yeah. But uh, they still see her. I I saw her when uh, they, they uh, I went to the arts fair, and they had a champagne. I forget now. It wasn't breakfast. I think champagne lunch. <laughs> I think it was, and I, I was invited you know, through the art sphere. And I'm sitting at the table, well, here comes Bruni. Uh, you know, and she sees me, she comes over and hugs me. <laughs> and people, who are you? So anyway, she, she goes and sits down with, I'm not too far away, because where she's got speech, you know, she gives a little talk back. And they gave them a rookwood plaque for they uh, they uh, honor somebody in the music uh, you know every year, mm -hmm. and that's what they honored him. And uh, anyway, uh, then uh, I was I, I took a friend of mine with me, and he said, "Oh, that's cool." I said, "Wait, wait, the, wait there. The big big guys are they all got to touch her." So anyway, they fly away, and then she. She smiles and she comes to look over me and I introduced a bit. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> but they're really neat people. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, he loves Cincinnati and he loves America. He, you met, I met, I can't go to this guy down here now at JMR. <laughs> I, I went down there, I had some tickets back. And they had this uh, Dancing with the Stars, you know? And they were, they were kind of scantily clad, you know? And they were up there doing this shimmy thing. And old uh, JMR comes down. Well, Eric wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, a, he's the conductor, he's not the star, you know? <laughs> but this JMR, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, that was my last question. Hey, you didn't record that, did you? <laughs> yeah, of course I have. We won't, we won't, we won't show it to him. Huh? Uh, but we, but anyway. we just about reached the end of our interview, okay. Lynn, and I, I just want to tell you what a pleasure it is to know you <laughs> and to have this interview. We well, okay. thank you for that, and I want to thank you for your service to our country. Well, thank you. And thank you I, so much. How did you get my, what did you? Your son-in-law gave us your name at the YMCA. Oh, well, you know, 